Good afternoon, I'm Abe. And I'm Frank. And today, we're adumbrating the first half of Unit 8A, Motivation, in Meyer's Psychology for AP Textbook. So let's get started. All right, Abe, start us off. Let's go. So motivation is a need or desire that energizes and directs behavior. And it's also important to note that our motivated behaviors are closely tied to our emotions. There are several perspectives from which to view motivation, and one is the instinct theory, which focuses on how genetically predisposed behaviors can motivate us to, do, to behave in certain ways. An instinct is an unlearned patterned behavior. So if we want to call a certain behavior an instinct, then there must be a fixed pattern of the, beha of the behavior throughout a species, and the behavior must also not have been learned. Now, while the instinct theory is mostly a failure, it is very valid that genes do predispose species towards acting in certain ways. All right, Frank, what's the most popular perspective from which to view motivation? Well, Abe, the current accepted theory of motivation is drive reduction theory, and it's as simple as it sounds. A psychological or physiological need creates an aroused tension state, aka a drive. This drive motivates you to satisfy the need. A great example of this is uh, if you haven't eaten, you get hungry, which drives you to eat. The same is true for being thirsty and several other natural processes. The drive exists because your body is always trying to maintain homeostasis or a constant internal state, like how your body temperature is pretty much always the same. If drives are a push, incentives are a pull. If you think you smell some freshly baked chocolate chip cookies coming from the kitchen, you'll probably walk over and check it out. Additionally, animals are driven by a desire to learn and explore. We hunger for information in a similar way that we hunger for food. This brings us to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which states that certain needs must be satisfied before others are addressed. In other words, if you're really hungry, you won't care about getting laid. From the look of the next couple pages, Abe, one of the biggest motivators is hunger. Can you tell me more about that? Let's do it. Hunger is a good example of how activated motives can overwhelm and control our consciousness. For example, if I start starving Frank, he will become food obsessed. He'll daydream about food and show little interest in everything else. He may also lose his sex drive and leave his girlfriend disappointed if he had enough game to get a girlfriend in the first place. The feeling of hunger is our response to our homeostatic system that maintains body weight and a steady stream of nutrients. But now let's talk about the physiology of what actually causes those pesky pangs of an empty stomach. When a guy named Washburn swallowed a balloon, he discovered that our stomach contracts whenever we're hungry. But even rats who've had their stomachs removed continue to eat, so there are, there are other ways we experience hunger. Indeed, when glucose drops, our brains chemically trigger our feeling of hunger. Glucose is a form of sugar in our blood that serves as our main source of energy. And the hypothalamus in the brain is sort of like the hunger management center in our brains. The lateral hypothalamus stimulates hunger with the hormone orexin, while the ventromedial hypothalamus depresses hunger. Our empty stomachs also secrete the hormone ghrelin, which increases our appetite. In general, if we start losing weight, our hunger increases and our energy expenditure decreases. The opposite happens when we start to gain weight. Basically, all humans and many animals have a set point, or the point at which our weight thermostat is set. When our body weight dips below our set point, our hunger increases and our metabolism drops to restore the weight. But our set points can change over the course of our lives, so many researchers prefer to call the set point the settling point. And there's another way our bodies regulate weight, and it's through setting our basal met metabolic rate, and that's the rate at which resting bodies expend energy. If I give Frank 50% less food for three weeks straight, his basal metabolic rate might drop by as much as 30%. Abe just covered how hunger works on a mechanical level. 
but hunger is also influenced by other aspects of biology and even culture. For example, our memory of when we last ate heavily influences our desire to eat. And those with memory loss can be tricked into eating dinner or lunch three times in the same hour, as long as they don't remember eating before. Culture is also important. Once when Abe and I were in Chinatown, we were looking for a place to eat, and a kind old man offered us horse meat, and we declined. Ni hao fei chang hao. Xie xie. Even though we were hungry, we turned down the food because it wasn't part of our culture. Abe, can you tell me about some disorders associated with hunger? Sure, I'll discuss three of them. The first is anorexia nervosa, which is an obsession with losing weight. Bulimia nervosa involves overeating and then throwing up or fasting or excessively exercising right after you eat. And a binge eating disorder is very similar to bulimia, but it does not involve purging or exercising excessively after you eat. Both anorexia and bulimia can also initially be triggered by weight loss diets. But now let's talk about what causes these disorders. There are several sources. The first is a family environment. For example, the families of many anorexia patients tend to be high achieving, competitive, and protective. Genetics also contribute. So twins are more likely to share a disorder if they are identical, not fraternal. Culture is another contributor. For example, in Africa, being plump is a sign of prosperity, so bigger sometimes seems better. Not for Western cultures, though. And gender is the final contributor. A study found that men are more likely to be overweight, but women are much more likely to perceive themselves as overweight. People, who usually tend to be women, that praise thinness and are dissatisfied with their bodies are most prone to eating disorders. If you are obese, it's sadly very hard to return to a healthy weight. This is because within obese people, fat cells have swollen and separated into multiple cells. And for reasons of evolution, the body wants to hold on to fat cells as much as possible. Even if you stop eating as much, the body will simply slow its metabolism, making you burn less fat. The trick, therefore, is to eat healthy and create strong exercise habits while young, instead of having to try to correct your behavior when you're older. Dear, dear, hey, watch dear, out, watch out. dear. <sighs> okay. Jesus Christ. Be more careful. We're okay, we're okay, we're okay. Um, th th thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And comment down below if you have any questions. We'll catch you guys next time.